Welcome to Standing Grace with Alan McQuarrie, a ministry of Thousand Islands Baptist Church in Brockville, Ontario. I'm your host, Alex Philippi. We all know life is hard, but Jesus is here for you. He wants to encourage you through his word and remind you that you can always stand in his grace. I will make a confession to you. The other day, I was having a really bad day. The night before, I was up and couldn't sleep. My mind was spinning about things of my past and just feeling inadequate in a lot of areas. And I needed to pray and ask the Lord, first of all, to give me some sleep. But in the morning, I tried to figure out what was it that was so disturbing. And the answer was, there wasn't anything particular. It was just a whole bunch of small things all piled on top of one another. You know, even as believers in Christ, we go through some really hard times and our past keeps surfacing and Satan always wants to make us feel that we're inadequate, that we are unqualified. He does a good job of that. And we have to remember that our self-esteem is not based on anything other than what Christ thinks of you. And the Lord calls you his child. You know, today I want to look at four facts about the Lord Jesus Christ that helps me when I feel overwhelmed in my thoughts. In other words, things are just going through my mind all the time that just seem to weigh me down and Satan keeps bringing them back over and over again. We need to learn and understand that there are four things in this one little passage that we're going to look at that reminds us of the victory that Christ has provided for us. We're looking at Matthew chapter 16, And in this passage, the Lord was with his disciples, and he asked them, who do people say that I am? And they came up with a whole bunch of lists of people. You know, some say you're John the Baptist, and others say you're Elijah and Jeremiah and one of the prophets. And finally, the Lord says to his 12, who do you say that I am? I mean, in other words, you guys have been with me now for, at this point, two and a half years, Have you learned anything? Do you understand who I am? You know, I've been a Christian for almost 40 years. Hard to believe. I remember the night that in an evening church service that I walked up an aisle and gave my life to Christ. Doesn't seem like that long ago. But certainly it's never been an easy time. Because the Christian life isn't easy. You're like a fish swimming upstream when all the garbage, all the tin cans and rubber boots and tires are going downstream and hitting you all the way down. And you're called to swim upstream and you're going against the tide and all the garbage of the world. Well, the Christian life isn't easy. But when the Lord asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? The reply came back, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So I want to give you four facts that we need to remember about Christ to help us when we are feeling so overwhelmed by our inadequacies. First of all, remember, Jesus is the Christ, which means he is the Messiah. He is the one that came to earth for you. And I believe that when the Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross, he hung there particularly for you. I know some people say, well, he he hung on the cross to make salvation available for everybody. I think it's more than that. I think he died on the cross particularly for you. Your name was on his mind. That's an awesome, awesome thought. We are special in the eyes of Christ. He came to earth 
because he loved you. He loved you long before you loved him. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. I need to remember how precious I am in the eyes of Christ. You need to remember you're not just an anybody. Christ died for you. And when you understand that, you understand how precious you are in the Lord's eyes. You're precious. You're important. The Lord went to the cross for you. That's, that's an, a, an amazing thing. There's a second thing that you need to know. Is that when he said, when Peter said, you are the Christ, he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Son of means in the likeness of. And so Peter acknowledged that Jesus is the living God, in the likeness, in the fullness, the living God. He's living today. I know that we have rough days, and I know that we have all sorts of feelings of overwhelming thoughts. But we need to appreciate the fact, appreciate that he's the living God right now. Right now, the Lord is in heaven. Right now, he can be called upon. You're feeling down. You're feeling discouraged. You're feeling like your day is just like yesterday, which is miserable. Or you don't feel adequate or you don't feel equipped or you don't feel that somehow you can get through today. He's the living God. Just say, Lord, help me. He's not a a giant vending machine that you have to put the right amount of quarters in to get the can of pop at the bottom. No, he's intimate. He's loving. He's gracious. He cares about you in such a unique way. He's a living God. Call out to the Lord because when you do, he's found. He inclines his ear towards you as a believer in Christ. That's an amazing thing to realize. He's the living God. Maybe you even need to turn off the podcast and just spend some time and say, Lord, help me. And do that if you need to. But understand, he's your Savior if you know Christ as your Savior. He's there for you right now. The third thing we need to understand is the fact that when Peter made that confession, the Lord said to Peter, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. Now, when he said that, what he was talking about was the reality of who Christ was and the confession that Peter made. The church that he would build is the body of believers. And that church is settled forever as being built on a rock. I need to remember, you need to remember this, that Christ is solid. The church of Jesus Christ is immovable. And when we think of that, we need to also realize this. Whatever your difficulty is, whatever the past is, whatever your struggle is, whatever it is that Satan is attacking you with, telling you that you're no good or unworthy or that your past disqualifies you, call out to Christ and say, Lord, you are my rock that I stand on. And I have other Christians who care about me. I will build my church, Christ said. You know, it's hard, and I will tell you this, because I've been through this. It's hard to appreciate the glory and the intimacy and the holiness of Christ Jesus when you're sitting at home every week. You need to get up. You need to attend a place of worship. You need to go and sing songs with other believers. And I know they've hurt you in the past. And I understand all those things that are going through your mind when I say that. But there's no substitute for it. 
There's no substitute for praying together with other believers. There's no substitute for sitting under the Word of God. There isn't. That's what God wants of you. He wants you to be there and to be encouraged and to encourage others as well. It is a very important part of our Christian life is to be in God's household because Christ is our rock. He's immovable. Always remember that. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He never walks away from you. He never gives up on you. He never looks at you and says, I've had enough of you. He doesn't do that. He's your rock. And he understands that he wants you to give him worship. He wants you to praise him. He went on to say the fourth thing that I need to remember when I'm having a rough day or a rough week or a rough month even. The gates of hell shall not prevail. In other words, Satan's not going to win. Satan may be attacking you right now. He may be f- making you feel useless. He may be making you feel inadequate. He may be bringing all sorts of things to your memory. But the gates of hell shall not prevail. The kingdom of God is victorious. If you love the Lord Jesus as your Savior, you have a heavenly home waiting for you. But until that day comes, you have a Savior who is victorious. Greater is he that is in you, right, than he that is in the world. Pray. Get back to the Word of God. Open your Bible again. Maybe it's been a long time since you've done your devotions. Open the Bible again. Pray again. Worship the Lord. Sing songs of praise to him. Get back to a church. Sit under the word of God. Be healed. Be challenged. Be rebuked. But allow the Lord to speak to you. Allow the Lord to challenge you. But most of all, give him praise and give him honor. So if you're going through a rough day today... If you've been up all night, if your mind is spinning, if Satan's just seemingly having a a field day with you, come to the Lord because he's always there for you. He is the living God. And if you need someone to pray with you, we're here as well. We really do care and we want to be a part of your life in that process. As we continue on this podcast to next week, may God richly bless you. Thank you for being with us today on Stand in Grace. I'm Alex Philippi, inviting you to join us for more teaching like this in person at Thousand Islands Baptist Church in Brockville, Ontario, and to join us online at standinggrace.com. Until next time.